the 3D printable box generator created with Blender Geometry Nodes. If you have a 3D printer, I'm pretty sure you have spent a certain amount of time in creating a case for something that you want to protect or something that you've created, an electronics project, an IT sensor, or something made from an Arduino. And you've either been lucky and found a model online that matched your requirements or you spent some amount of time creating something on your own and maybe in Blender even more time than with other tools. But um, Blender has a feature called Geometry Nodes which lets you generate something out of something else by using some magic called Geometry Nodes which is in the small window at the bottom here. I'm not going to go into the details of how Geometry Nodes work but I'm going to show you how the re result of this specific Geometry Node that I created will help you creating your own boxes. So let's get started. The, the simplest shape that we can add is the plane in Blender. And if we go into the, here on the right hand side, the modify properties and disable the geom geometry node, we can see that this shape is just a square. It has four corners and well, that's it. And if we enable the modifier again, we will see this is the, the generated box out of this. So in this simplest case, let's take a look first at what can we um, adjust here. So the, the bottom floor height here, let's set this to 10 millimeters, um, changes how thick the bottom floor plane here is in the generated object. So if we set this to an incredible amount, like 50 millimeters, we can see that the, infill, the, 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 the hole in the middle is not that deep, but yeah, you get it. And yeah, we can also change the wall height of the bottom part here. Or the same goes for the lid, which we can change the floor height. It's easier to see that the floor is changing here on this part and the lid wall height. And we can also change the thickness of the walls and the rim that is created for the lid to attach to the bottom part. Um, divides it in half. So this, for example, if we set the wall thickness to 3.2 millimeters, we will get a rim here on the inside that is 1.6 millimeters and also 1.6 millimeters here, which is nice because that would be four parameters on a standard nozzle. Um, and we won't have any small or thin gaps that will take ages to print. Now, if we think that the corners are too sharp, this is not handled by the modifier, but we can handle this easily by changing our model by beveling the corner vertices here. So um, let's get back to the, the, the properties here on the right hand side again. I've also added an XY margin. So if I zoom in a little bit, I can say, for example, my 3D printer is not that good. I will add a margin of 0.2 millimeters, which will make, oops, I modified the wrong object. This one here, 0.2 millimeters. Oh, it's already set to 0.2. So if I set it back to zero, we can see that this edge here is getting back to the original width and this adjusts the margin. So I always like to use something around 0.2 millimeters. So the resulting would, uh, rim here would be 0.4 millimeters and 0.4 millimeters here to have some space in the middle, especially if you have sharp corners here and uh, the accuracy of your printer is not that good. And the same goes for the Z margin. If you have, for example, a surface finish that's not totally perfect, without the Z margin, closing this box would not result in a seam that's really flush. So by increasing the Z margin here, we can reduce the height of the inner rim, the inner edge here to accommodate for that, which I also like to set to 0.2 or equal to one layer that I'm usually printing. So uh, staring at square boxes is not that interesting. Let's play, let's, let's get started and play around a bit. So the easiest case is when modifying a mesh that is, um, wait, let me change to the top view. Something looks like something like this. So if we add a plane, it will look like this. So if I add another plane, wait, where is it? Oops, let's move this into view and resize it a bit, we will get two boxes. Okay, so let's say we wanted something that contains a small device and something that contains a larger device. And if we join those and add a face, we have something that will look like this. 
I'm not quite sure which project that would be, but it's possible. If we, for example, cut this face here in half, we can add compartments, and this is where the magic starts to happen and gets the fun starts. We can adjust the size of the compartments very quickly by moving those edges back and forth. We can also remove those edges by dissolving them, or, for example, here, if I remove this edge entirely, we will have a hole. So in this case, our model is kind of broken. And let's dissolve this vertex here. And let's select this area and add a face. We will have something that is shaped like this with a matching lid. And let's say we don't like the sharp corners on this model here. And by sh hitting Shift Control B, I can bevel vertices here at the corner. If you like a 45 degree angle, keep it like that. If you want them to be more rounder and smooth, you can start scrolling by adding subdivisions to the roundness of the corners and we will have something that looks like this. And yeah, this is for meshes and for Bezier curve curves. If we disable the modifier and take a look at it from the top like this, we can see this is the curve. Wait, we can see it. Yeah, only in this one. Anyhow. And now we just have the curve and we can change the shape. Let's see how does it look like. And we can see why we're editing the shape what we're doing here. With the Z curves, I noticed that if you print it directly as it is, we'll have those approximations. You can go here to the right, go into the subdivisions and make sure that it's really, really smooth. What you need to watch out for is those edges here. Sometimes if they get too sharp, they will break. But this way it works. This also works with NURB circles and um, which gives you also more poss possibilities to play around with. Let's assume you want to add a new object. Let's start with a plane, move it somewhere into our viewport, and we want to add the modifier. If you've created a new Blender file, you have to go into object mode, then append, select the downloaded Blender file, select in the node tree the 3D printable box generator, and then add a geometry node modifier and then select the 3D printable box geometry node and voila, you will have created a box out of your shape here. I've designed the geometry node that the resulting bottom part will always be uh, centered around the origin of the mesh, uh, which makes it a lot easier um, in the case if we move the, the, the mesh around to the left of it that we can see um, what we're working with here and um, it's easily too easy to get distracted and play around with it and yeah there's also here at the bottom the generate lid flag so if you only need if you only need a case bottom compartment you can turn off the generation of the lid and yeah that's about it if you want to create a new case that will hold our glasses we will use a bezier curve and then say the wall height of the bottom part is, let's say, 15 centimeters, and the lid is fairly short, and we are done. Let's make it a bit larger. We would have a case for our glasses. If the rim is too short, let's make it taller. We will go to six millimeters, and we will have a bigger piece. Once you're done, select your object, go to the file menu, export as STL, and sure to select selection only here, export the STL, then go into slicer, import your object, then hit up to preview your sliced result and you can see that if you're working with a wall thickness that is a multiple of your nozzle, close to multiple, for example here, subtracted 0.2 millimeters because of the, the XY margin. Let's fix this. Say here we, wait, this is not the XY one. Let me check. What's the wall thickness here? The wall thickness is 3.2 millimeters. What is the result? We have parameters at the top part. If we go with 3.4 in total, export the objects again. Put it from this, and we can, yeah, somehow my slicing settings are funny here. Uh, uh, that's, uh, I'm confusing myself here, sorry. So I have the XY margin set to 0.2. If we remove those and export again, 
with our perfect four parameters, that's what I wanted to say, yeah. So, okay, said we want 0.2 millimeter margin. We need to add this value that we add here at the xy margin to this value here, plus 0.2, which is 0.4, but twice, so 3.6. And if we export this again, from disk, we still have our four parameter top rim and required thickness at the bottom. Oh yeah, that's the 3D printable box, box generator made in Blender. Yeah, like it and if you have questions feel free to head over to my Discord server and find effective room for this too. How do you get it? You head over to Gumroad find this tool here, bdt.gumroad.com slash l slash geoboxes and you can set your own price for this, set the starting price to zero, but feel free to value the time that this will save you, whatever you think is fair. Watching, have fun trying it out and see you next time.